Good day, everyone. Welcome to Channel AMEC, your insight to the Australian visa system. My name is Carl Young, registered migration agent. This channel is about to provide you all the most updated migration and visa information and also the most accurate information for all of you required to get a visa into Australia or migrate into Australia. Now, today I would like to um, give you a uh, update which I received uh, later um, yesterday in regards to the coming up uh, parent visas so and also uh, just to capture a little bit of detail of a lot of um, viewer they had put the inquiry uh, in regards to the uh, the coming up 494 regional skill employment visa which is gonna be commenced on the 16th of November 2019 because this is, this is a it's it's a it's a wow factor. It's a it's a wow visa, but a lot of detail that the government has not really um, actually told us. But um, I will be able to access to the legislative instrument uh, to go through those detail. Uh, perhaps there are some hint in there, or and, you know a lot of imaginations will be coming up because the the federal election is coming up on the 18th of May, and I believe this legislative instrument is actually done and completed. Uh, for the future government to actually uh, insert more detail in there where I would be showing you uh, in about um, five minutes of time so let's go into the update uh, let me go to my email just to show you so this was received yesterday uh, what was the time for 558 p.m. so um, as you can see um, which I have um, told a lot of viewers that the 2019 is an exciting year where there's a lot of changes, uh, updates coming up. Let me just pull this uh, screen more wider. So basically, uh, what it says is the uh, the parent visa uh, will be going ahead on the 17th of April, which will be about four days away. Okay, so that will be Wednesday. Okay, so if you consider uh, to get your parents a long-term visa to stay in Australia for uh, three to five years and they can extend it once, uh, you may consider it. Uh, it's not too hard. It's all about um, paying uh, more fees to the government. And there's a test for the sponsor where you're required to uh, reach, I believe was around the figure of um, a salary, annual salary, of 84,000 and you'll be eligible to sponsor your parents for a three-year or a five-year long-term visa now that's basically uh, the updates there and also it says the partner provision not commencing so what was what was it about so partner visa uh, if you had follow our in videos uh, basically they were looking to commence the new partner visa arrangements on the 17th of April as well by uh, where the um, the partner sponsor is required to get the sponsorship approved prior actual lodging the partner visa. So existing law and the previous law, uh, you can actually combine everything together and lodge it at once. Uh, now they are putting a further um, compliance uh, instrument in there where they require to have the sponsor uh, tested, approved then you'll be able to lodge a part of it. So it's going to be a two-stage uh, versus a previous a one whole bundle. Uh, but looks like it's not going to commence on the 17th of April. So um, that's just the uh, well, good for a lot of um, clients. But um, uh, let's see what, what will happen. So if you are um, preparing for a part of visa, lodge as soon as possible. So um, it will be one bundle to go. Now, Talking about the 494 visa, so I've actually found out this uh, Federal Register of Legislations uh, on this instrument here where I, um, I'll just jump into the detail here uh, because it's very bulky. So you can see it's uh, 56 pages of legislative instrument where they explain it out uh, what the regulation is going to be for 491, 494 and also 191. Now, the only key uh, queries that a lot of people are, is question in regards is this part 494.225 now let me just read it and then I'll explain so 
what does this require? So it says at the time of application, meaning that before you launch this application, you have to fully prepare and all the supporting evidences is required to be there attached while you're launching the visa. So the applicant had been employed in the nominated occupation for at least three years on a full time basis at the level of skill required for that occupation. OK, so in order to lodge a 494 at this stage, where we can see it here is if you're an accountant, you have to show that you have been employed full time as an accountant before the time of lodgement. OK, so if you only got two years, one year or you just graduated, you cannot do it. But the trick is here. There's all here. OK, that's there. That's the excitement. But I do not know what that's going to be. So or circumstances specified by the minister under sub clause two. So what is sub clause two? Sub clause two is right here. Let me read it out. OK, um, you know, the, the, the logic, if you're not familiar with uh, legal stuff the logic of law is really weird but let me explain fully so sub clause 2 says the minister may by legislative instruments specify circumstances in which applicant is not required to have been employed as mentioned in sub uh, the paragraph 1a for the purpose of subclass 494 visa in this uh, employer sponsor string what does it mean Okay, that basically opens up for the next immigration minister. Uh, bear in mind, have to know the election, uh, the federal election, general election is coming out on the 18th of May 2019. So, who is going to be the next immigration minister is very, very vital. Looks like at this stage that Labour is taking a lead, Labour Party is taking a lead, possibly. Uh, taking the control management of the whole Canberra. So we got to look into what the future Minister of Immigration uh, and what his intention will be. Now, bear in mind, they all ha always have power to do to elect new laws. But this does open up an opportunity where the new Minister of Immigration will then insert a further instrument to specify what occupation is waived uh, and will not require to show that three-year full-time work experiences now that's that's actually very vital because um, let's just imagine uh, previously there, there has been a lot of um, uh, lobbying and complaints in regard to the working visa uh, T TSS and also 187 visas uh, where they are very, very similar to the 186 ENS, where they require three years of work experience to demonstrate and lodge the visa. Now, there's two. There's not much of differences. So, if, if one person uh, has three of work experiences, why would they go regional rather than lodging in a 186, staying in the city? Okay. Now, obviously, differences there was the the uh, the regional Australia does provide a further uh, occupation list. But if we're looking at this, they're going to abolish and seize and terminate the current 187 visa where they replace the 494 and they still have that in there. Now, previous 187 does not require to work for a further three years to transfer into a permanent residency. Now, the new 494 requires to be there for further three years. Now, prior to that, you have to show an additional three years of work experience prior to lodgements. Now, that's bulky. Now, from how I view it, it doesn't show much of incentive. But I believe that the further instrument going to insert it into that uh, 424 regulations, uh, a 494, I'm sorry, 494 regulations, uh, will be a vital change. Whether they will include all of the occupation or they only allow certain and very limited occupations, um, let's watch it. So um, if you really like our um, channel, like our news, uh, we are always here to provide you the most accurate and most updated uh, news. Consider to subscribe and should you have any further query, leave a comment and I shall reply you in time. Thank you very much.